our giant appeared. This is its thigh bone. It's the largest ever found. Its heart must have been immense. It probably weighed 230 kilos and would have had to shift 90 liters of blood with a single beat. There's one. Hello, family. Welcome back. It's been a while since our last upload, but I wanted to let the final card video that my brother made get the views that it needed and not hide it behind a bunch of new uploads. And so thank you guys for sharing his video as much as you have. It has went way further than this platform usually allows on our channel. And so big thanks to you guys for all the work you've done to help us out. You guys are a blessing. But today's topic is kind of like the shape of the earth in terms of putting the pieces together and finding out what they're hiding because it's made people think the creation account never happened. And when you talk about the flood and all these different things, people are like, yeah, well, there's dinosaurs and we know that the flood story and the creation account is a fairy tale. And you hear things like millions of years and billions of years repeated over and over again. And so I want to share some things that help clarify the dark and muddy waters that this world and the wisdom of this world is creating and it has to do with these titans these dinosaur bones that they are finding and one of them caught my attention because the dinosaur's name is literally the titan osaurus <laughs> kid you not the titan osaurus many of you dinosaur experts have heard that name before and I just was never too crazy about dinosaurs, even though I love the movie Jurassic Park. One of the discoveries I'm going to talk about actually helped bring the idea of that movie into being. And the research that I came across about five years ago was from a guy named Mark Armitage, or Mark H. Armitage. He kind of runs it all together. But uh, he got fired for the discovery he made about soft tissues in these alleged dinosaur bones that were supposed to be millions of years old. And this wasn't just a one-time thing. He predicted this would be the norm. And he was right. He has found soft tissue in so many of the specimens he has examined. These dinosaur bones, or I call them that, that's probably not what they really are. However, his work is silenced. As you can see, he only has about 1.4 thousand subscribers. I'm not going to share any of his videos to respect his wishes. He wants his work to speak for itself, and I don't want to interfere with his mission. He's doing a good job. He doesn't want it to become a debate and get heated. He just wants people to have this work to look at and make what they want of it. And I believe 100% that his work is a game changer. His discoveries remove these specimens from the millions of years category and place them in the thousands of years category around the time of a great flood. The soft tissue found on these bones should be impossible. It's not. It's there. And you can see his work for yourself. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that. You guys are free to look that up. I'll leave a link in the description because I personally had lost this information and couldn't find it. And someone, one of you, shared it with me and said, hey, look at this. Check this out. And I was excited to see that his work was still on the internet. I assumed it had been wiped clean, but it's still there. He did win a lawsuit for getting fired for his discovery. They really had no reason to fire him, and I believe it was because he was a threat to their narrative. And so you have all of these specimens that I'm going to be talking about today belonging to the Titans, or the Titanosaurus, they call it. And read an article so you can kind of see why I started talking about this in the first place. Because the enemy likes to put truth in plain sight and just right in front of our faces. And those who know the truth understand why they're doing it. But these bones that they found, I find it interesting that they were found in Australia. And also, one was found on a globe model here, is Australia and in Argentina. Now, if these were actual titans, you know, the Nephilim, and they were trying to escape a flood, and they knew where the highest ground was, they probably would have started heading south. <laughs> That's just my theory. I know the world back then, pre-flood, had a lot more land on it, I'm assuming. And so it was easier to get around. We think of it as Pangea nowadays. But I'm assuming that when they were leaving, they would have wanted to head south. Being as large as they were, they knew 
where most things were. I don't know how much they traveled, but looking for food was probably a priority if you were that big. And so the size of these creatures, I will go ahead and tell you from their estimates, was about 163,000 pounds or 74,000 kilograms. There's a person standing next to it for reference, and they say that this guy would have stretched as long as a basketball court. Now, were these things Titans? You know, the Clash of the Titans. Rob Skiba is the first one that I heard that made that connection about Titans, where they say Clash of the Titans in the Greek mythology being based on the Nephilim mentioned in the Bible and as well in Enoch, the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Book of Giants, all those different accounts of them. And I find it also interesting that they are very similar to the Disney dragon. Found this just looking for images of dragons. So to get to the article I was speaking about, the one here says, To the untrained eye, it would seem like nothing more than a collection of interesting rocks. But the McKinsey's knew better, and they now have scientific backing that what they stumbled across in 2006 is the largest species of dinosaur ever found in Australia. Meet Australio Titan <laughs> Cooperinesis, or the Southern Titan. Reading this is what really made me want to do a video about this because they're calling it a Titan. And that does, of course, like I said, date back to the battle read about in Enoch where they were punished the offspring of the fallen to fight each other to the death. Might be why we don't find them fully assembled and bones are kind of everywhere. And an artist impression shows the Australotitan Cooperinesis or the Southern Titan. So there's their rendition of it right there. Never really see all of the bones in the pictures they have on the internet. Usually you just see a femur, a couple of vertebrae. But it benefits the behemoth that's only just scientifically described for the first time by paleontologists from the Queensland Museum and Aeromanga Natural History Museum. So near where they found it, believe it or not, <laughs> there's a well, bogus one of those natural history museums that have cavemen and all of the fake bogus models they have based on bone fragments that they find. So slim chance that they found it there, but they found it pretty close to it. And thinking about how fortunate you'd have to be to just be a paleontologist and actually find something at a dig site made me think about the Book of Enoch again, going back to the accounts of these things battling it out. Who would know? Because these things didn't start really being discovered until after their concept was invented. But who would know where to find these specimens? You gotta think about it. If the disembodied spirits of these beings were to become demons, is what we know of as demons today. They would know where they died. Might be able to point people to their specimens. Just a thought. Just putting that out there because that, that dawned on me the other day. Like, how do they find these things? You know, we can dig rock quarries everywhere and people don't come across these. But these paleontologists pick a dig site and they find stuff. Very interesting connection there. Because a lot of the people that were finding the fraudulent missing links, these were people who had sinister purposes. And were, it would make sense that these paleontologists who are finding these things have some sort of connection there. They know where these titans <laughs> would have died. Their last moments would have been. These evil spirits would remember. They were corrupting the world, eating people. They were hard to feed. You, like I said, the size of this thing, imagine that being a person or a being or a creature. It would have a hard time finding enough food. They said this thing was a plant eater. If you're over 100,000 pounds, it's going to be hard to find enough plants for you to sustain yourself and having them grow back fast enough, he would have to go to different continents. Like that would be a large amount of plants to feed and raise a family of these things. They didn't just live by themselves on a continent. They would have to be families of them, generations. That's insane. And then there was a mass extinction and now you have all of the millions of species. Crazy. Doing the math is something that really gets your wheels turning when you start using their numbers and everything. It still doesn't add up. But it says here, those impressive statistics put it in the top 10 to 15 biggest dinosaurs ever found across the world. And for Australia, well beyond the middling species previously found here. So here's a picture of them with the Titan bones smiling for the camera who were seemingly pointed in the right direction, knew what it was. It says that the Museum is yet to complete an oversized gallery to house a full-scale 3D printed skeleton 
So they're going to 3D print this thing, and they will be using, I'm sure, animations of what people think this looks like. They only have a few bones, and they are making an entire skeleton. Now, when I was looking for answers as to how many different bones they have of this thing, it says that the most complete set of remains belongs to Dredno... How do you say this word? Dreadnoughtus, maybe? And includes approximately 70% of the dinosaur skeleton behind its head. So they don't even have a head. The finding, I've seen animations of it already, the findings of such complete remains allowed paleontologists to make confident estimates of the dinosaur's length and weight. So we have 70% of its skeleton and don't even have a head of this species of titans. So the titanosaurs, such as Patagotitan and Argentinosaurus, I think it's the one found in Argentina, whose weights have been estimated 63 and a half metric tons. But it says they were described in 1877. The species is known from a femur and two caudal vertebrae found in rocks. Hmm. So they had a femur, two vertebrae, and they were able to tell us what this thing was way back in 1877. And if you know of any more findings on this, let me know. I know many will go to the comments and be like, we already have a full skeleton. It's right here. Send me links. I'm researching this stuff for the first time in a long time. It's been a while since I've looked into this topic, but I do find it interesting that we have all of these illustrations and images of things and only a few vertebrae and femurs to make these images, but they don't seem to be that deep in the ground. Looks like a flood would have covered this thing with large amounts of mud. You know, a giant, could you imagine that giant wall of water moving in from the floodgates opening up? It would have caused a lot of these things to fossilize rather quickly, but you will see guys like this next to this Titan fossil saying, this here is a dinosaur from millions of years ago. And he has his very convincing accent that makes you just kind of be like, wow, he's right. I don't think so. He's going with a narrative that he's been taught. He might believe exactly what he's saying to be true. I know that my father is true and this world has been lying to me. So it's fun to investigate this stuff with new eyes and look at this as what it most likely is, the corrupt flesh or a titan, a dragon bone. We don't know. There's a lot out there that we are starting to piece together for the first time in years with the blinders of false science falling off. But I wanted to just pass this along to you guys who are new to this topic. It's hard to find things like the Mark Armitage discoveries, but it is possible if we work together and continue to work together. I know that many of you know more about this topic than I do. 